What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. It's Millennial Trades. It's January 18th, 2022. I messed up really bad today. Uh, I took my account down by like 83%. And we're going to get into exactly at the end of the video how much I lost. The trade I was talking about in my video last night where I was saying that PayPal was going to reject at the supply zones that we were approaching near the $80 mark. I was correct on that analysis. That is not the trade that I took this morning. I will say, I think the news clouded my judgment. I think I was just putting a little bit too much emphasis on the PPI numbers that are coming down globally, not just here in America. And I was just adding too much validity, like giving too much validity to the news media. And I've been saying on this channel how I feel like news has been helping me to be on the right side of the market and it's been helping me to make money, you know, just paying attention to it. That wasn't the case today. The news didn't do me any good. Neither did a lot of the other charts, you know, watching the dollar, watching the NASDAQ, watching the SPY, watching the VIX. I mean, yeah, there were tons of indicators that told me I should have gotten out of this bullish trade. Really, I should have been looking at the PayPal chart. I'm making this video to hold myself accountable. The fact that people watch it, that's a bonus and that's great, but I need to hold myself accountable uh, to myself and before God Almighty. So if you like these videos, <laughs> give it a like. Comment down below if you have any thoughts or if you can relate. You know, we got to get this right. I got to get this right. You've got to get this right. This is incredible how quickly my fortunes can turn the other way. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the chart. All right, guys, before we look at this PayPal chart, I do want to show you all of the contracts that I bought right here in my monitor. You can see I bought 37 contracts all together. This adds up to 37. I bought them from a range of $33 to $131, $150. Look, $150 right here. That was the highest I bought them at. I think I bought one here at 33 and I was buying from 930 to about 935 and I sold at 118 when the pain got so bad. Let's go ahead and look at PayPal. Remember yesterday in my video, my analysis was correct on PayPal that we were probably going to reject at this supply zone right here. We'll call it at the $80 mark. That is not the trade that I took today. I was reading the PPI numbers. I saw that PPI was down globally. The manufacturing sector contracted a little bit. There were all these kind of, I guess, reasons for the Fed to be less hawkish at their next FOMC meeting. And I just put way too much emphasis and validity on that bullish trade, that bullish narrative. And I was on the wrong side of it. I didn't recognize it until it was too late, until I almost blew up the entire account. So you can see we were kind of consolidating here on a daily basis. These are daily candles. I was very hesitant to go long last night. I said that I just wasn't buying the bullish narrative for this trade. And I said that last night, I did the exact opposite today. <laughs> you know, go figure. It did look like maybe it could squeeze out. We opened below the open and close from yesterday, but we had broken it. You can see that wick right there. We kind of broke through and we went deep in supply. Let's look at the 15 minute chart here. So, you know, I'm scaling in all through this and, and I'm thinking, oh, we're going to break this high here. Square had broken its opening high. Amazon broke its opening high. It just didn't happen for PayPal. PayPal stayed right under the supply zone. And as soon as I saw this candle coming in, I should have gotten the hell out. I was actually up about $200. I'll show you on the minute chart in a moment. I was up about two or $300 when we were in the supply zone and I did not take it. I had a chance to sell out for like a $400 loss right here. I did not take it. I had a chance to sell out for a thousand dollar loss right here on this big bearish engulfing candle. I didn't take that. And so I let this run all the way down into the demand zone and the pain was just so bad. 83% of my account gone. And so I had to sell. I had to live to trade another day. Let's look at the minute chart here. This would have been a good target, right? Going bullish real quick for a quick scalp into supply, especially if it opened under the supply zone and we had some buyers. You could see the volume coming in. So I was already in this trade at 9.30. You can see that on all these contracts here. These are all 9.30 contracts. Before it even turned 9.31, I had like probably like 20 calls, the $80 call. And I was up $200 on them. $300. I just didn't take it. This candle came down here and I was nervous because we're in this supply zone, but I was like, well, maybe this is going to turn out to be a three bar play. And then when this candle came in, I was like, oh no, this is going to be a bad day. I don't know why I didn't just sell at that moment. I should have sold, gotten out of the market and just went back to it tomorrow. And I didn't do that. 
You know, I, I couldn't admit that I was wrong about this bullish thesis. Forgot about my analysis from last night that the supply zone, probably PayPal was going to reject that. So again, I held until let's call it 118 is when I sold. And that is all the way down here. That's in this area right here. 118 right here is where I sold. This candle right here, this green candle. I was like, I'm just going to get out, you know, before I can't get out of it at all. Very disappointing. So yeah, I don't know what to say. I mean, it was just a horrible trade. I was on the wrong side of the trade. I was right about the analysis last night. I put too much emphasis on news this morning and went bullish. I didn't cut my losses when I should have. Everything that could have possibly gone wrong went wrong on this one trade. And I bet almost the whole account on the trade, which was incredibly stupid. You know, it's like the greed gets to you. The fear of not having enough money in the future gets to you, right? There's all kinds of reasons why I think I have trouble admitting I'm wrong and I almost trade desperately a lot of the time. So I need to cut that out. Okay, so here you can see it. We're down over $4,000 in one day, 83% of the account. I do not want to put more money into this account. I cannot dip back into even more reserves. So I have got to trade with what I got left, which is $827. This is what I have to trade with. It's humbling. It's going to be frustrating. It's going to be difficult, but I know it can be done. I've done it before. I've done it with less money. Does it deter me from trying again? No, absolutely not. Does it make me want to quit? Absolutely not. It only makes me want to do it even more because it's like some of us, we have to get this right. You have to get this right. I have to get this right. I don't have a choice. That's has to be the mentality. It seems like a big deal now, but I think six months from now, I know six months from now, a year from now, I'm barely going to be thinking about this day. It is what it is. The total right here that we have left is $827. That's what I'm going to be trading with. And I'm going to be documenting that every single day on this channel. So as you can imagine, not fun, not a great way to start off this year. I mean, we are down big on the year now. We got to attempt just to recover this slowly, but surely. Do I care that I have to start over with such a low amount of money? No. It doesn't deter me at all from trading, but this is a huge issue. There's something deeply rooted in my psychology where I do not want to admit that I'm wrong. I've got to weed that out. So thank you so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, give it a like and uh, comment down below. Follow me on Instagram at Millennial Trades. And as always, until next time, I'll see you on the next video.